the first question I want to ask you is if you could tell us a little bit about your ideas on how technology hinders uh, mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it can, technology can hinder mental health in a number of ways. The one that comes to mind for me is um, you know, there's a prolifer proliferation of apps out there for uh, well-being and for mental health. A lot of them, we have no data on how efficacious or how effective they actually are. And one danger that we have to I think, really keep in mind is if these apps, if people expect these apps to help them to alleviate depression or anxiety or whatever it is, um, and the apps are, are ineffective or actually harmful, this could have a huge negative impact, not just on people's immediate well-being, but on their likelihood of trying to access care in the future. And so it could be a sort of uh, double whammy in terms of their um, not getting better and not seeking help in the future. And the second question is about how technologies can support mental health and well-being. Yeah, um, I think, you know the, the flip side of that, the, the obvious answer is going back to the apps and, and technologies that are out there uh, with a lack of um, with lack of evidence for their efficacy. We do have some that have been supported in randomized clinical trials, and I think the extent to which we can get them in the hands of people who, who need them, um, this can go a, a long way toward providing care for those who don't have access to it. And otherwise, more, more ubiquitously, uh, a lot of people who experience uh, mental illness are isolated. Uh, they don't have easy access to, to medical care or to, to people who can support them. So email, social media, people think about the, the negative aspects of, the, of these things. We are emailing too much, we have our head on our computer too much. But given advances in technology, we can today reach out to people in a way that we couldn't before. So I think there's lots of great potential for using technology to try to improve mental health and well-being. In a word, together. Uh, I know that you know, engineers, um, software developers uh, are interested in developing applications that can be useful for mental health and well-being and mental health professionals are interested in doing the same thing. And I think my perspective is we, in isolation, do this imperfectly. I think when we work together and bring expertise um, and understanding uh, from both sides, I think it's the best possible product and the best possible outcome. So I think working together we can achieve uh, a lot more than working independently. Uh, any particular recommendation on how we can uh, establish channels to work together better? It's a great question. Uh, I think just over time, meetings like this one, uh, like Kai, where we come together and, and talk with people from different um, disciplines and think about how we can work together, um, publishing across journals, um, going to different meetings, uh, joining different committees where we interact with people who have a background different from our own, I think can go a long way towards creating um, long-term collaborations that can, again, help, help improve the quality of care uh, we're able to provide.